Hi everyone, welcome back into the channel. I'm out here in uh, Pennsylvania. Now, you know, I've had some requests to do all different kinds of flowers, and of course we're going to be doing them all the prima, since we're staying with the all the prima uh, playlist here. So what does that mean? That means we're going to do a wet into, uh, well, like I said before, all the prima originally meant that the oral artist, it was originally applied to oils, this was before acrylics, and it meant that they were going to do it all in one setting, okay? Uh, over time, that has... And, you know, it's gotten rid of that, and it's, they call it just wet into wet. Oil, oil painters apply to that. But acrylic painters can also do it. But why they did that in the one setting was that so that the oil layers pushed into each other so that it basically dried the oils a little bit better. The oils would recure basically as one component, except for doing it in layers. And in the old days, when I used to paint with oils, and we did a lot of, of course, a la prima, then we also did what we call fat over lean. We had the ver we had to lean out the paints on the first beginning, the first layers going through, and then uh, add more oil to it as we got further on, so that the, you get a proper drying, so the oils didn't crack. Well, of course, that started all into the alla prima. Paint it all at one time in one setting. You don't have to worry about the consistency so much. You don't have to worry about fat over lean, and you do it wet on wet. Of course, acrylic artists, we can do it no matter what, but we do try to do it in one setting. That's why I like to run that uh, difference through. But there's a lot of people who like to paint wet and wet, and with the new acrylics and with new mediums, now we can do that, like I have been showing you in the in the playlist. So. And you should be watching this in the A La Prima playlist, okay? So if you want to learn more about A La Prima, I'm painting a whole section of A La Prima wet into wet techniques with acrylics, and it's in the playlist on the channel. It's called A La Prima, okay? Or you can go over to jansenartstudio.com, hit the free videos at the top, and then go down and hit the A La Prima playlist. And we're going to be doing this all year in this playlist, okay? I post other videos... Okay, I post other videos that aren't all the prima. So if you want to follow along all the prima, stay to the all the prima playlist. You know, keep the confusion down a little bit. Okay, all right. So I have my nice dirty extender. This is extender medium. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's a real thin. I showed you this in one of the last all the prima on the rose. What's the difference between all of, between an extender medium here and the Derivan's new open medium? And I just love this. And so I'm going to be painting these prairie sunflowers today with the open medium so I'll put some of that out here as well and I'll show you of course we'll talk about the differences of it you know like we do like I try to do but there's one a rose that I did there with the acrylics that I really showed the difference between open medium and extender medium you can see the, the extender medium is very thin the open medium is quite a bit thicker they both have a very slow drying time as a matter of fact you know I've put some of this open medium on and what you know, and I've showed you in other videos, open medium being nine days mixed into colors, and you're, then it stayed nice for nine days out on the glass. That's one of the reasons I use glass. Um, but one trip, my wife and I made a trip out to our gallery out in Nebraska and came back. We were gone two and a half weeks. I came back. My palette was still good. The ones that I, and I hadn't covered, haven't done it. I was just like, oh, that's going to be dried up. And it was still good with this open medium. I, I've been painting with it for about a year, and I'm just blown away by it. But it takes some getting used to, especially if you're an acrylic painter. Because it, it'll take it to a little bit like the oils, and you know we'll talk more about that as we get going. Let's get into some of this painting, okay? Now, prairie sunflower. So over here, I have a board, 11 by 14 board, and I painted it with just with a gray, black and white, maybe a tiny touch of yellow into a yellow oxide into it. And I took it to about a value seven. It almost just a low seven, almost a six. And uh, this is a, a painting of the prairie sunflowers that I had, uh, I did last year. As a matter of fact, if you look at my number that it was here, and this is a photo of it, but if you look at my number here, I painted it in March of 2019. It was my 78th painting of the year. Um, and I painted this, and I was... Uh, I was just doing it to practice it because out in Nebraska, they had all of these. These are the prairie sunflowers out. I took this picture and out of my walk where I walk the dogs every day, I get these, these prairie sunflowers. This is what they, they actually look like. They can, they can have big fat petals, skinny petals, they all different kinds of sizes and stuff. And of course, this is the farmer's field that's right next that I go walking along. These are the real sunflowers, what people think of sunflowers. And these sunflowers are, are no kidding. They're 
like this big, okay? The prairie sunflowers are only about like this big. They're not too much bigger than what you see here. They're about about that big. And so there's a, a little bit of difference between, but the prairie sunflower is more like a, you know, out there in Nebraska, they consider it a weed. It just grows everywhere. And, uh, but it's uh, a real, a real fun uh, flower. And they're just all along the roadsides in the September, in the, in the late summer to early fall. They're just absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to paint some, but I wanted to show you this one. And I only have a photo left of this one because after I got it done, a lady walked into the gallery and said, I really want to buy that. And, um, uh, so I said, sure. <laughs> so <laughs> she did that. So I thought I would recreate, not exactly the same painting. I don't do that. But we'll we'll make a fun composition and talk about it as we get going, okay? So on my colors here, I have my Hansa yellow, okay? <clears throat> I have Darulite yellow. I have uh, uh, yellow oxide. And I have the uh, naphthol red light and the burnt sienna, pine green, ultramarine blue, and the... Uh, uh, Red violet, quinacridone violet, and of course my white. And one of the other things that uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of paint with, so you see a little bit of difference here to this um, Darulite yellow. And I'm going to be teaching you a lot of this later on. Um, and, uh, and let me just show you something that I did with this Darulite yellow that uh, I really like. So this is the Darulite yellow. And uh, what this is is... It, the paint itself, the Darulite yellow, it's an, I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice color and stuff here. But, it, you know, being acrylic here, you know, um, it is not quite as thick as what I like to use sometimes. So what we have is this, what is called a rheology modifier. It, short name is an acrylic modifier. This is, this takes just the tiniest bit. And I use just the tip of my palette knife here, and I'll just poke it into it and take it out here. That's That right there, that one little drop is enough. And watch what will happen here as I mix it into this paint. It thickens it right up, see? It makes it all the way to... And so you can control the thickness of the paint that you use here with acrylics. Now, I can... I can pre-mix in some extender into this if I wanted to. Now I have a really slow drying, thicker paint here, acrylic paint. And so I sometimes, especially on like the sunflowers and I, I paint here, I like, I, I'm going to be basing a lot off of Darulide. So uh, I like to thicken that up. Now, if you don't have the rheology modifier or something like that, what you do is you just put your acrylics out, let them dry, let them kind of start thickening up for a couple of hours and that does it but I do like the rheology modifier you're going to see me use it in some landscapes and stuff like that later on that we can change the consistencies of the paint where we are especially if we're doing palette knife painting or brush painting to get some really really cool uh, different types of techniques okay all right so we'll just do that so I thickened up my Daria like just a little bit and I like that for this type of painting so what I did with this one, color-wise here, I, you can see it's keyed off of a lot of Darulide. My three yellows, my Darulide, my Hansa, my real toned down uh, um, yellow oxide, and then yellow oxide and some burnt sienna that go into the, you know, the centers of these um, of these prairie sunflowers. Now, picking out some of the other colors. Now, this background here is a little warmer than this one is here, so I might want to warm this up just a bit, but. Um, this cooler color that I worked out here, I used the ultramarine blue, and I hope I said ultramarine blue. That blue is ultramarine blue. I usually paint with phthalo, so I'm, it's ultramarine blue I'm using today. Now, why ultramarine blue over phthalo blue? I love, my favorite painting blue is phthalo blue. But I use ultramarine blue there because I want to have super clean violets. And I'm going to get that with phthalo blue. But ultramarine blue just gives you a different variation. And why the violets? Because it's the complement of yellow. So basically this painting that I'm sitting here, color theory wise, is a uh, complementary color scheme. Okay, so it... it with with the addition of green, of course, changes it. But if you just look at the primary elements, the two types of flowers, it is a complementary color scheme. And so if I want to do that, I want to use a blue that makes the very best and cleanest violets just in case. I may not need it, but just in case. And so that's why I pull ultramarine blue, which is more of a blue violet. Thalo blue is more of a blue green. 
So it still gives me nice violets, beautiful violets. You've seen me paint with a lot of violets, but the ultramarine blue does a little bit better job of it if you're staying mostly to the violets. So I have that. And uh, so I think we're going to start off first here. We'll put some color into the background. We'll draw a composition up here, and I'll show you, and we'll talk about it a little bit as we sketch it. But first, let's put some color. I'm going to take my, uh, my uh, one inch. You can use a three quarter or one inch. This is our one inch fusion flat here. I'm going to take some of my blue down, and I'm going to mix this up here with my ultramarine blue and then some white. And ultramarine blue and white, the white will kill the ultramarine blue really quickly because the ultramarine blue is not quite as powerful, or really is not as powerful as the thalo blue is that I normally use. We'll use a little bit of the violet into this. We'll make some pretty colors. Don't mix that all up exactly here. And uh, we'll push in some color. And I like color variation into this. Sometimes you'll see me and I'll use my brush and I'll push it around. I'll get some variation. Now, I'm using the, the, um, the extender medium because I want my, my colors, my first application of colors on this ground, on this board. This is my MDF board that I normally use. I want my first application of these colors here to be thin. Because I don't, you know, yellows, yellows are inherently, uh, when you're working with yellows, yellows are inherently weak, except for when you get to the, the yellow oxide up here. It's a very powerful, very opaquing yellow, but it's not very bright. Your diurides and your Hansa yellows that I'm using here are what we call semi-transparent colors. So they don't have a lot of power in mixing them. So I want to be able to work into these blues, but I can't have too much of that blue and stuff onto the surface. So the, uh, the they'll go green really quickly because the yellow it doesn't. Now the, old, the yellow oxide won't. Now I'm going to show you a way to stop some of that, but that's something that you keep in your mind. How powerful are the colors that I'm working into and working in? So if you're working with a semi-transparent color into a, and you're going to work it wet into wet into a color that has more power to it, you generally will thin out the color that has more power. Does that make sense? So it doesn't have as much power, okay? And we'll push that down. And, of course, we're not going to use the same kind of composition. I'm going to use kind of the same idea. I'm going to push a, a few uh, burnt sienna greens down over here, just a few. And they get these beautiful, you know, these beautiful burnt sienna greens and stuff everywhere, uh, you know, along the, along the painting composition here. But let's just do something fun out here. And I just set my brush down onto the side. This gives it that nice contemporary feel that I like to have, you know, into a painting. And uh, we'll pull down a little bit more heavy here, like this, and we'll pull that down here. I just love this kind of the working here of it and sometimes I'll take the uh, the paper towel and, and break some of those edges you know it's just I love a, a lot of artists and stuff and one of them that I've, I've watched for years and I just love all his broken edges and works and, and stuff is Richard Smith and I have all his books and his DVDs and stuff that he did and and um, but just his working of color and edges is just really nice stuff. So that gives me kind of something to uh, to kind of work into uh, into that. Now, let's take and I won't. I'm. I basically should put my water away here because I should not. When you're working wet on wet, let me just set that way up there because I will have that habit because I, I paint more acrylic now than I do wet on wet. But a lot of you have asked me to paint wet on wet, so we're going to do it again. But um, the you don't want to add water. Water is the faster, the fastest drying thing of the component of the wet on wet of acrylic. So you want to keep out of that, okay? As much as possible. That's what you want to do is keep out of it. Well, okay, let's go in and let's pick out. So this one goes this way. So let's turn one this way. And I'm going to back out just a bit of it here. 
so that could because and you sometimes you see me back out sometimes you 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 don't and this time I'm backing it out because I'm going to be working with yellow. But And I'm always worried about my yellows, you know, being able to really stay as, as bright and clear as I want them to be. And maybe I'll push. I do like that one pushing up towards that light up there. So we'll kind of keep that kind of arrangement there. Now let's come in. We'll take our big brush. I'll stay big brush here for a minute. And I'm going to add some extender medium to it, so this stays thin. Now I'm going to I'm, what I'm using is thin and thin. I'm not using this thickness yet, thin and thin here for right now because this color I really don't want it to stay around too much. This is basically just going to be the area, and see how that yellow oxide there has a lot of power. It puts it in nice and what I call the ghost of the painting here. We'll put it in a little bit ghosty here about what I want to paint. And we'll put one over there, which will be kind of nice. Maybe push one up here, maybe this way here. And uh, yeah, that'll work. We might even trail another one back down over here like that. So we get a little bit different uh, feel for it. Now, I'm gonna paint most of these before I go in to paint those violets. Basic because and it, you can like you can shoot in a little violet now and it's not a bad thing, um, but I want to work in some of my colors and my shapes and my light source first because I want the little violets, the little flowers here, and I might add some more blues to these, but I want these little flowers to not have as much interest. Violet's really dark, okay, and you go putting on too much dark right now, you don't you know you can. The violet, let me put it this way. If you go put on too much dark violet, the violet becomes the controlling color then for your your uh, prairie sunflowers. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put some darks and some shapes into my prairie sunflowers before I add those violets. Okay, because the second that I I add violet, and let me go over here and let me grab a uh, number ten flat here for a second. Let me just show you what I mean by that. Let's take a a bit of our blue. And a bit of our uh, the uh, quinacridone, which makes beautiful violets. We'll add a touch of the the medium here to it. Okay, now don't do this. This is just me. I'm I'm going to put it up here where you can see it real quick here. But if I put this in, see how your eye goes to that color even more than it does even these greens and all these other kinds of stuff. Basically, because that is a a contrasting or a complement color to this. And so now all of a sudden my painting switched from becoming about sunflowers to becoming about violets. What I want to do is I want to be able to go to those colors, but I don't know how much of this I can have on there. So as I start to thin it out here and push it around here, and all of a sudden your eye starts to leave that a little bit more and go into the sunflowers. So if you're painting a painting, fresh paper towel here, and I'm going to pinch wipe it to clean it. But if you're painting a painting and it is all about sunflowers, make sure you get some of that initial contrast into that sunflower first before you go tossing all this other color on there so that your eye can keep the painting into perspective, what we call perspective, okay? All right, so let's just do that. Okay, one of the darkest colors that we're going to have, and matter of fact, we can even use... Um, a bit of that violet into this burnt sienna. We can even add just a touch of that violet and I'm going to be mixing up now that I want this a little thicker and I'm going to do just a bit of drawing and stuff to it. I want this thicker. This is going to uh, stick around. So and I'm going to push this right into where I think these centers here. We'll do this one a little low in the back. So we'll push that in and see those little centers here and are going to have a lot of interest and we're going to do this several times so we'll push that in but I want to create here some violet always feed I always say feed your your um, feed your uh, uh, your open medium into your acrylics here as well and we got to decide our shadow side and our light side so you know, I'm going to bring light in down here like this, so this will be my shadow side onto this one. So I'm just going to pull in and out. Sometimes you'll see me pull down because I don't want to constantly pull in and out, you know, of the of the center of this 
uh, prairie sun uh, this prairie sunflower because it will make the petal stiff if you constantly go in and out. So sometimes you pull down, and you know that um, uh, I was watching this uh, old uh, uh, master in portraits, and uh, he was saying that uh, you know most of the hair, and this was it was one of the first times I ever I heard of this. He paints most of the hair sideways this way, and you know, like on a lady's portrait, and then pulls down and through. And I was watching that, and I was just blown away by that. I'm going to add some Darulite yellow into this now. Feed it. Darulite, because it's a little different color. You can see it has a little bit more punch to it here, as far as a color here. So I'm going to add some of that in and around, model that around here. I like to start out really model. Just pick up this color here. So lights come in here, top and bottom. This will be bottom here. We'll pull some out this way here. Set that in like that. Okay. Just get this nice movement in and out here. This is going to be a back one. So we'll We'll not only pull in and out, we'll pull some different ways here as well. Let's um, maybe even take a little bit of our yellows and this violet. Let's push one back just for color back here. And uh, we might just leave that just back there for color like that. That might be neat. Okay, so let's go in and now you can make a darker center. Burnt sienna and blue. Do you know in the in the old days the the original ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna was actually a little darker than this sienna we have here, but uh, that's what they uh, made a lot of their blacks from. See how dark that gets in there now, and you can see that's going to be the controlling color of my uh, uh, basically of my sunflowers here. This real dark here and I want to just push it and model it around step back on your brush push it and do what I I call this incorporating the color I'll put on like I'll put on a strike of a tone like that's going to be the center of it right into there like that see and you want each one of them to be a little different and you can kind of see a little bit of the texture but then I want to incorporate it which means I want to soften out this edge here just a bit and I, again, I've given myself the freedom to use my fingers on this one. But if you don't want to use your fingers, you pinch wipe your brush, okay? And you just pull, this. you hold your brush kind of flat, and you just pull down through like this and just kind of incorporate it. Or if you want to do like me, I'll just use my finger and incorporate the edge of it there as well, okay? So, but you can use your brush just flat, do like I showed you on the pears and stuff, on the on the pears a la prima. We did that one, and uh, we'll just incorporate some of those colors. We want to give some of this kind of nice movement, and it's going to take quite a bit to build that up, you know, there, this movement in and out and stuff, okay? So let's take some of this Darulide, a little of this burnt sienna and violet, slightly different tone, has more of the violet in it. Let's just work a bit of that in and out here. Bit of that across, just in and out. And so I, I generally when I paint like this in tones, and we're doing a night, a, a, you know, a nice contemporary, all the prima here. When I paint like this in tones, see, I like to go in and out a little bit like that. See that thumb adds that movement, that soft movement, that can give you that translucency to the flower. But when I paint in tones like this, I like to do it many times here. Many, many times, okay? And slowly build it. And I'm never afraid, and you know, it's like anything that I say, that I uh, I make it bigger, and then I tend to paint it down into size. So I always oversize it a little bit, you know? Always oversize it a little bit. Okay, so let's go back now. Let's get some of this lighter. Let's get some of our Dari nice thick Dari Light. Isn't that nice that it's a little thicker? So it has some power to it in the thickness. We'll add some medium to it here. Okay, we'll add some nice some nice medium to it. And not only I'm not always going to pull in. I'm going to pull back and forth just a bit, sometimes to get those broken edges here as I start to work some of those, the feeling of these petals that I want to have. And I might... 
I might shorten them down and I paint into the center so I can paint the center out. Um, but there'll be times that you'll see me, I will pull out like this to create a petal. One or two are the, the, the look of that petal there. And you can see right now the color is a, a little weak. And you, so you can see, you know, as opposed to what's here. Now, see, this one was painted about four times to get it up like that. So, you know, over the over the course of the painting time, this this painting here took me about 20 minutes to paint it. Um, but it uh, when I go to teach it, it can take a lot longer because I talk to you guys. Yeah. And I'm sure there'll be a comment or two on here that you talk too much. They always do. Whenever I try to teach you guys, I always get comments on here that, oh, you take too long or you talk too much. And. I just let all that stuff go, but because I I like to teach you guys, I like you guys to know, and I understand what it's like to sit back there and watch somebody's video and not have a teacher or something, and getting frustrated and everything. I understand that. I was there for many years, and so I'm going to push that on. Now that's just a bit too much there, but watch what happens here. Um, or let me just do it this way to show you. I'll just take that, and you don't you don't waste a whole bunch of color here, but you can run right back through it and take some of that back off. Now I'm going to leave that little sparky edge there for right now. I'm just going to leave this 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 one at this kind of stage here. And uh, let's come back up here. Let's put a little whisper. Just whisper the 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 edges here. Okay, we'll just whisper them. We're not really painting the petals yet. We're still doing color. If that makes sense. We're still doing color here. Not painting the the uh, prairie sunflowers yet. Don't forget to add your medium, or else this will dry on you. Okay, so we're just we're painting we're painting here for color, and that's all I want to do is get this color, this movement of this color. Now I want this to be more of a shadow or turned edge here, and so I'll do some longer poles here because I want I want it to pull down. So I'll do some longer pulls. So sometimes I pull out, see? Sometimes we pull out. We'll push in and out that movement there. We're just establishing. We can change everything here. We're just giving the first kind of feel to the movement of the flowers here. Okay? So let's go in, pick up some more paint right in here, and let's deposit a bit more light right in there. So I always go back, I always revisit my center of interest here and always, always building paint, building paint. Now, those of you that are pure acrylic painters, this is where it can get a little bit hard because this paint stays wet. And you, when this paint stays wet like this, you have to develop a lighter touch with your brush. If you go in there, see what happens. So I have this paint in here, see? But if I push in here too hard and stuff, I start lifting off or the paint doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. Because it's just really slippery and slick in there. And so you have to learn how to develop a, a light touch. And that's one reason why I like the Fusion brushes. They're ultra soft brushes. And so they move really soft. Let's, let's bounce back up here. Let's grab a little bit of our red a little bit of our Darulite red. Put a bit of that open medium in that so it'll stay nice. And let's just tap a little bit of that color a little further out into some of this a bit. See, and I like, see I used the corner of the brush there to kind of break those textures and those edges. This gives you that really neat look to it that just people go, how do you do that? I use way too much paint in the corner of my brush and, and uh, just have a bit of fun. Let's pull down some light color right down into that and just kind of lift off here. So we'll push back and forth. We can push back into our darks. You know, you can use a corner of your brush to kind of incorporate that in a bit or whatever. But we're building in, see, this other tone. So we want more of a a bit of an orange tone. We can even make it here with a little Hansa, change it up a bit. But we want a bit of the orange tone 
appearing out here as well here so it's not just yellow we'll get a bit of the orange and sometimes you know and I didn't really do it on these guys here but sometimes I really like to have the violets you know push the violets in and and maybe I'll do that today on this one um, you know I always like to to do different things and everything but uh, so you know, just get some of the different tones and colors in there. Sometimes I'll use greens in and around the centers, and I like those. Let me get back up here towards some burnt sienna with that Darielite. light. I like that. And uh, grab a bit of our open medium in here and just push that around a little further. So, see, it's a back and forth. And when I'm working really fast... I can do this really quick and sometimes I'll take this kind of tone and I'll drop it somewhere else into the into the painting here so that you pick that that tone travels just a bit and I, I like that kind of stuff. Let's get up here towards our darks. Let's just restate some of our darks and I'll push this into that thicker paint there, see? And uh, it's a building process is what it is here. Let's get that a bit darker. Here, violets, burnt siennas. Here, just a bit darker. Here and there. Here, like that. Using different parts of your brush and everything. That works. Now, I'm going to uh, take some of this tone. Let's go to a little bit of Hansa with this. Thin it out just a bit with some more of the medium here, but I'm going to use it thicker so that I have power against the background. And I'm just going to, I'm going to fill in just a bit of this movement here, just softly going around, which fills in the round shape or the, here, because we have it turned, the slight oval shape of the sunflower, building it out. And I have to decide yet on these petals up here. See how that slides and how you can incorporate that and that color in there really nice. But I want to pull in and out a bit, vary some of that around the center. So I can see where the petals are and everything that I want to do. But see, what I did here on this one was I kind of filled in. If you look back in through here, you can see it real soft, real, real soft. I kind of fill in the, uh, the shape, the oval shape of it here, right like this. We'll pull that out a bit just so that it doesn't, and what that does is that stops your petals from being too stiff. See, if you have just petals and then you see background all the way through them, that's going to stiffen the flowers. But if you're basically, you're seeing these, what I call the ghost, you know, like you've seen in some of the rose videos, I do these ghost flowers back behind. So think of your prairie sunflower having ghost petals back behind. It has many, many other petals and stuff. But any time that you ghost like this back behind, you're going to make the the presentation of the flower softer overall. So when I go put petals on there, it's going to be overall softer. So let me just show you. Let me add a bit of white right up here and a little bit of our medium. Let's put a lighter a lighter petal right up here. We're going to come right up on top and we're just going to pull down and in. Okay. Now, we'll put a next petal here next to it, change the tone slightly. We'll put another petal right in here like this. We'll just kind of walk this one around like that. Okay, I'll thin that petal out just a bit. But see, so you start to see the, the shapes of the petals. Now I want to take these off just a bit. So I pull in so I don't have them just perfectly round. I'm painting for the movement. You know me, I like to paint for the movement of petals and stuff. But you can see as I build these petals, there'll be a softness there in between them here and that's the the ghosting that I put in there to begin with does that make sense so it's the ghosting is really kind of important let's take this and let's pull out a few here just out like that so just touch into the edges let those you know sometimes I push really hard so the paint goes out to either side and it creates more of a, an edge like that onto the petal and sometimes I don't. I try to vary, as I'm painting petals, I try to vary the pressure on my brush, whether I'm turning it. So sometimes I'll turn it on an angle to get more of an angle. Sometimes I do it more on the flat. 
I'm I'm changing the pressures and everything on the brush so I get different looks. That's what I try to do here. Let's put on just the idea here of some front some front petals here. Down like that. Okay, so you can hear my brush just grinding on the, the surface there. We'll just push in and soften some of that back movement there. Push in and soften that. Okay. And so how much you're going to let those stand out, how much more you're going to do, that's going to be up to you. Here, let's get a little bit of our Darulide and some Hansa. We'll model this with some white. Model means don't mix it up all the way. Add some of your medium here. Let's put in a bigger one. Light source is coming down this way. Let's put in a bigger one here. And we'll pick up a little bit more paint here. Pull down, lift off. Break the edge of it there, that first stroke. Just break the edge. I like the softer feel of the petal there. I'm going to break the edge. Sometimes I pull out, sometimes I pull in here. But I'll come in and put on, sometimes I'll put on a couple of the petals like that. Sometimes I'll do it with my brush. I'll pinch wipe that color off of my brush. Sometimes I pull slightly across it and then down just to break the edges of that of that so it's not quite so stiff. So you get the feel of the of the daisy petal, but it's not stiff. And then I'll change directions here. I'll I'll pull out. I'll pull out for a few of them here so it's not always the same. Here, I'll pull out a bit. So they're a bit different here. You can make some pointed up, you know, then which happens sometimes when they're turning or they're you know, rotating around, they'll get a little pointed. Boy, I like that thicker dye light. It just feels so good in the brush. Um, let's just pull some in here. We'll just get a little casual here. And then I like sometimes just to push in and out push that color into some of the other so I start to get that feel of that movement there and um, that work them back and forth and around and build some of this color up here get some of that nice now see this is where it's like pushing taking off some of that paint so I have to go with a little bit lighter pressure on the stroke there and uh, make sure you use lots of paint here. And we'll pull out. The more paint that you put on, you get those little, you know, textured edges and stuff like that that you can get there that look kind of neat sometimes into the, you know, sometimes I'll leave them so you see they stand very proud of the surface and they're kind of neat, and, you know, and they. But over here on the shadow side, I'm going to want them to recede a bit. So I just whisper them a bit and just lightly hit over the surface there and take them out just a bit. There, as you paint those. Lots of paint here. And you can even, you know, like we did on the pears, do a little push-pull, get a little difference there. Push those in and out break the edges it'll makes it makes each petal there on the sunflower as you paint it on the prairie sunflower here a little different and that that's what makes them very fun very very fun let's take just a bit of this paint here and we'll give the idea here of these front petals here we're going to do most of the light on this one pulling down so let's get this now if I'm going to do that, I might want to go into shadow by adding some yellow oxide or up over here to some of my oranges. So the color I use down here, model this up, color I use down here is not as bright as some of the colors that I've used everywhere else onto the sunflower. So as I'm pulling it down the shadow here. So this is a little lighter than what's going on down here, see? And you'll get all kinds of different looks. And maybe I'll pull this one up just a bit here. And I like these, you know, because the 
prairie sunflowers get all kinds of just different angles and stuff to their petals and that looks kind of neat there on that one just kind of but the longer I make that right there the less it turns so you want the longest ones here you want them a little shorter into the back and that's what causes the flower to turn so we can do that with some violets and stuff as well let's take a bit of this yellow We'll kind of tap that around now. I lost some of my orange and stuff around there. And that happens as you're painting, especially with a lot of color. So you just restate it, you know. Put it back in there. It works. It's all part of painting. Many times I'll put it in and say I like the look. And then, you know, it'll slowly paint out as I do and I play. Not, I don't play. But as I build, as you build color, it gets a... Uh, you know, it you lose it, <laughs> basically. And so you got to go find it again as you're building back and forth. And I do that all the time in, in just about everything I paint. I put it on, and then I'll have to go back and put it back again. Just your burnt siennas, your blues, your violets here. And uh, tap some of those other colors. We'll get some oranges back in there. I just like those real mottled, you know, centers there to get all kinds of different looks here. Like that. We'll just kind of tap that around. You can use this kind of technique on so many different flowers. Let's pull a little bit of that shadow out here and push that in and out. See how you get that beautiful color incorporating there and moving through. This looks great, and I don't mind restating some of that movement there. Just like that color moving through. Get some interest back there behind into that guy and without having to... Uh, without having to, um, you know, go too too light or anything like that. Let's get this burnt sienna green. We'll put some of our thickener, I mean, not thickener, but the, uh, the uh, open medium in it. We'll cool it down a little bit of violet. Let's come in here and look at that beautiful color. See, that violet really kicks the complement to these uh, little sunflowers. Now let's use this because we're going to have a stem show up on this one. Not maybe not that thick, Dave. And let's just break it a bit, so because we're a we're a, a wonderful uh, contemporary painter here today. Let's break that just a bit and uh, set these things. Always have brush and paper towel working them <laughs> here. We'll come out. Just kind of draw that off over here. Yeah, that'll work. If you want to, you know, bring out an edge here on onto this side, you can do that. Just drop in a little bit of green. Bring the edge of that sunflower. Now, you know, <clears throat> am I going to do more petals on them? Yeah, sure, I'm going to do more petals and stuff. But, you know, I'll go to a technique like this, negative painting. Remember I showed you all this. This is negative painting. And let's push a little more of a orangey, let me show you this. So sometimes when I'm transitioning, I don't always like to go right from a yellow to a violet or something like that, or I don't want to just always travel this cooler green. So I'll go more to a, a warmer kind of a green, maybe a, a little bit more of the burnt sienna or yellow into that here. I love the Darulite and burnt sienna together. That's just an incredible. But see, but see how much how it's changing that. So I'll push some of that color around, and that gives you a nice softness, see? And it takes the color out. So, you know, I'll use this as a nice color carrier sometimes to even move color, like, further out, you know, here. But you can see it softens that edge of that. Now, if I want to do some more drawing in there, then I can, after I put that on, I can slide up here, and let's just say I want to give more of an idea of the petal edge. Well, then I can do that with a, the idea of a leaf or something sitting back here behind this and draw, basically, instead of making the petal on out of the sunflower, making the petal with the background here. Let's push this up a little shorter. Blur these edges up and in here. Let's push a little bit of this dark up into here. And there's just a thousand ways you can do it. That's what makes them so fun. You know, there's just so many different ways you can paint beautiful flowers. You know, so. 
but you can see that that movement and stuff get in there now I have some of my darks and stuff in there I'm going to take some of this green out of my brush I'm going to poke it into a little extender and just take some of the remainder of remainder of that out there let's push around a little bit of our violet here and I'm going to model these up add a bit of white to it if I need to soften it at all, I'll slide into my yellows or slide into my greens and some of these colors. See how that softens it and grays it right away here? And uh, let's push in some ideas. Don't, uh, you know, if, if, you, if it looks too much like a solid color, change it. Like I just added a little more blue here. Let's just come around here. Add a, a touch more here. I want to use it a little heavier right out in here because I want these I want some pretty little blue blossoms right up in here so I'm going to use it heavier and maybe even onto some violet sides here look at the violet play against those colors isn't that pretty it's all about the color here we'll keep it softer grayer there into the back maybe a few touches it's kind of gray this a little bit, uh, but maybe a few touches right up here by the flower. We'll push those around a bit, okay? And uh, push those in. This is all really wet here. So we'll push those out and around here. And push some of these colors. I didn't want to go in there too much. Let's take some of that back out. Just some movement. Just, um, I just don't want to circle the whole thing, but we, you know, I don't believe in doing that, but we want to add some, this little touch, boy, that's a pretty little spark of color right there, isn't that? Kind of takes your eye right over there. And see, I'm just, I'm kind of, I call this sometimes stab art. <laughs> I'm just dabbing just boom at, at the at the painting here to put these different little marks of color here so they're not always a stroke see that's the whole thing is you know I spent so many years in decorative painting that if I'm not careful with my brush techniques I get really stiff really quick so so many years of e -e 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 back and forth like that and learning to stick now there's nothing wrong with that but that was it took me so many years to uh, to break that, you know, to get back up to being a casual painter, to loosen my brush back up after all those years of heavier uh, stroke, you know, and and I love those years. Don't get me wrong; I'm not saying anything bad about that because those those are really nice. But um, it just took so long to break those habits, and I don't want to go all the way back there. Let's take a bit of that violet, just a little touch here and there. We'll carry it right into our right into our uh, prairie sunflowers again and that you know let's just take a bit of that light onto the blue side here I'll use it thin so it doesn't have much power here so I'll grab I want it thin so I'll grab the extender okay so it doesn't have much power because I'm going to put the violet up on top of the yellow. I want the yellow to stay. Violet will kill the yellow really quickly. So if I kill the, the violet with the thinness of the paint here, it won't have as much power and it won't kill the yellow. Does that make sense? See? Just a little touch. So consistencies of your paints, guys, is so important to so many different things and looks. So I'll put a little bit of that in. But see, we're doing it logically and we're doing it with consistencies of the paint here that's kind of neat let's just travel that around here just a bit let's put some of that back out into uh, we're going to make some blossoms and stuff here but we want to travel that tone a bit right out there okay now we're not done with the sunflowers and stuff See, I always go back and I re I'm working the colors out through my composition here. And uh, this, this is that nice contemporary look that I like. So we'll, uh, we're working our colors back out through the composition. And then we'll come back and work the, the center of interest again. 
we gave a little bit more to the to the um, petals of the sunflower depending upon you know how much you want to uh, stand out and stuff like that okay um let's uh, go in and let's lighten this up we'll add now we're going to add for a little bit of thickness we're going to want this to come out a bit more blue some white some medium tap this right into here let's go a little bit lighter i'm watching this against this so i want this value to be real close to that and so that it doesn't dominate my uh my uh sunflowers too much and i'll start some ideas of little petals and i can break those edges a bit stuff but uh model it up change the color a bit i'll just do some ideas here you don't need to have absolutely perfect blossoms because you're already as soon as i i you know as soon as i build one really one or two nice ones the rest of your eye will say those are blossoms and that's what the impressionists do it's like how many do you have to paint until you see a blossom and then from that point on, all you're moving is color. You don't need to have a whole bunch of blossoms the same. Let's go lighten up, maybe blue that just a bit more. And let's just go add a bit of lighter blue here to those guys on that side. There we go. All kinds of, and this is the fun thing about it. There's just all kinds of fun ways you can paint them here. And set your looks that you want to have. Let's go with a maybe a little bit lighter one. Right out in here into this area here. And then I'll bring this sunflower up over it. Bit. We'll set that back behind that. Now, maybe a bit more light. This gets dangerous, but we will use it in a smaller area. Lighter, smaller. The law, those of you who study color theory, the law of disproportionate color. The proportions of color that you put on. And the law of disproportionate color says the lighter, smaller. Because that's what happens in nature. Good color theory. And as I paint these kinds of things, you know, always these laws, you know, like the eight rules of contrast, all these laws are running through my mind that just slow my brush down and I start thinking about it. And it's these rules that tell you how to paint. And so I learn the rules, then I know when I'm creating something here how to paint something. So let's just go with a soft, a little more ghosty right out here just a little bit of that movement that's going to be kind of nice here let's uh go thin here for a second and so we don't have too too much power to it and we'll go maybe get a bit of the blue in there cool that off just a bit here idea of a few leaves here leaf shapes right out here on this side, a little bit of blue and violet and burnt sienna here. That's kind of good. Just kind of sketch those out and around. You can do a few more leaf shapes. I, you know. A lot of times I like the the leaves, you know, sometimes you see me do them more precise. Sometimes you see me do them just real wispy and lost and, uh, you know, I, I like both ways here. Let's put a bit more of that dark right up here. We'll paint this right down, push that violet right back behind there. So it sinks into there. Maybe a... Sometimes, you know, it's just, I, I like to step out and expand the composition by putting some of that dark further out, the, the unexpected of the, of the painting. 
you know, just pushes it out a little further. So all different kinds of uh, ways you can do it. Maybe some uh, quick touches sometimes in there. of the, And this is what uh, the impressionist would do. You look for quick touches of a tone. So I got that burnt sienna there into the... Uh, into the the prairie sunflowers there into the centers and so i'll look to putting out some touches here that uh, might help draw your eye a little further out and carry that tone a little bit out and that works there let's just uh, kind of tap around a bit that we'll push in and out a bit there, that looks pretty good. Now we'll get our Dario light up here. We'll get our Hansa up here. We'll get some of our medium. We'll go back to our light. Let's model that on the brush so it's not completely mixed. I tap it in there so it's, so I'm going to get some of this. And let's just reset a petal or two. This time you'll get a different look as the different paint consistencies here. And that's kind of pretty. You kind of hold your breath and pray as you pull, you know. Sometimes it's like, oh, please work. You know, it's just, shoo, please look like I know what I'm doing. Just pull that in. Just get that movement pulling in. That's kind of pretty. Sometimes I'll, you know, I'll push the shadow. Remember I showed you on the pairs, you push and pull with shadows and stuff. Sometimes I'll lift the shadow out that I know is sitting right underneath that. So so I get a different look to it, see? Because I know that shadow. I'm not pushing so hard that I'm mixing. I'm actually laying this one tone right on top of what's happening in the rest of the sunflower here. So I know underneath that light there is that shadow. So I just wipe my uh, finger right there. If I just push out and lift off, I'll extend that shadow out through there. Or I can lift that light right off, showing up the edges of those violets again. If I feel that the petal is at all too stiff, I can control that there by this lifting of it. And it's all nice and wet because of the medium here. I tell you, Derivan's got a lovely medium here. I might leave that edge right up there like that. I kind of like that. Maybe even just a touch of it right out through here just to spark the edge of that sunflower there I might you know and I, I'm kind of judge you know do you want to have a more powerful wider edge of a petal right out here you know and it, that's I, sometimes I'll play with it back and forth like this until you kind of find the look that you want do I want more of a lighter edge right back up here on this side that fades away that was a bit much, but well, that actually looks kind of nice on that. So, and sometimes you get lucky <laughs> that it happened, you know, this a really nice way. No, it's it's all completely planned. You know, it's, you know when you're dealing with paint and consistencies like this and pressures, you, you know what should happen, and most of the time it happens somewhere in that area, but sometimes it doesn't. But uh, we'll just lighten this up. So I know this is going to get lighter. See? I'll push that nice light in there like that. And I like that. Now I want to blur that edge of that off. So I'll pull down just to soften that edge. Do I want the shadow to go out a little bit? Shadow go out just a bit. Just like that. Okay? And uh, now let's bring up... Let's get some of this nice light. Let's bring up this one so it overrides that that front of that one there just a bit. It's actually lighting in it a little bit more than I wanted to. But let's just give it a try and see here. See if we like that look of those working back and forth like that. You can, you know, you can definitely, we can definitely, definitely put it in a little heavier light like this and leave those light marks like that so that it's turning a bit more you know that's uh that turns it you know if you leave these heavy short that turns it a bit more let's not take out too much of that violet 
and that's really kind of nice. Maybe we'll increase the orange shadow here. We'll make our oranges here, our shadows here. We'll increase that orange shadow down on this side. So it's a little bit, I like that orange and violet kind of there. That's kind of nice. And the, uh, so it's a, you know, it's kind of like really drooping down here because, you know, I'm, it's, how do you fix that? Well, I would just take a little bit of my shadowy color here and paint back up into that and bring it back up into shape. Maybe just draw that down. Maybe even just take a touch of that orange and stuff and just hit a bit of that right in there. We'll leave that. Now, the question is, you know, do you want to bring up some of these other petals? This is all becomes your choice now as the artist. And, of course, this is uh, what makes us all a little different. We all make different choices. You know, do you want to bring this petal? Let's bring this one out more here bring that out maybe bring this one in a little bit more that brings more dominance to this particular one in other words it gives it more uh, visually you know more pre prevalence into the painting here but it is kind of pretty like that I might uh, shoot just a little more light right up here so we get a definitely a bit more light into our sunflower here up onto this side here there like that it makes a nice pretty little and you look at that and see yeah that's not too bad you know let's just take some of this little bit of light on the corner of our brush and sometimes I, I don't like perfect dots, so I'll push them off and tap them in and kind of push them into the little flowers here. Get a little darker back into the backs here. Don't spot it up, Dave, but just little ideas, little marks there. Travel the color. I always look to travel the color and stuff through as well. Now, we're going to be tapping a bit, just the tiniest little bit of light into the centers of these things. And so this is the thing. This is just like I say in roses and like everything else, okay? We don't want to, you know, I don't want to touch a whole bunch of light or white into that center. I want the, the sunflowers to be, in, and it's like what they are. You know, when you look at the, the sunflowers, it's all about the petals. It's not about the center. But the center has to have a little bit of, and it has on these little guys, a little bit of, of interest and stuff in there. Um, so what what do we do? It's just like the roses and everything else I say to you. What really makes it more than anything else is the shadows. So you go around your thing here, your your sunflower here, making sure maybe some reds, burnt sienna is around making sure that you have a good expression of your shadows around. Let's get some burnt siennas and some of that blue into there. Making sure those are well expressed because it's the dark through simultaneous contrast. Color theory students, right? Simultaneous contrast will make your lights look light. This will actually make our lights look lighter. So. We darken down our centers here, and this is the part that really pulls you into the sunflowers anyway. And maybe you get a nice tone. And I like to vary these colors, get cool. Just put in a bunch of little tones in there. Sometimes just quick little marks and leave them because that's just interest. Like, you know, you got, oh, I said, would you soften that out? You know, maybe not because it is interesting in there, you know. And uh, so I'll push that around there. Then I'll start out with, I just pinch wipe my brush. I'll start out with some yellow oxide and tap just a little bit of that yellow oxide, which helps block some of that shadow, but it'll start to some of the centers. Because the yellow oxide 
is your most opaque of all the colors and has the most power to stand, stand proud of the, the little darks that you just put on. So I start there. Always start there. Let's just push this on. Let's just lighten this one all up because it's sitting into the back. And so that's probably all it's going to get. Maybe up here I might go to Darty Light and a little bit of Hansa. Not too much. You can spot them. You can speckle them. You can do whatever you want to do to them here. Sometimes I speckle them more than what I do here. I'm just going to do a little bit through here like that and uh, leave those there just a little bit but see it's the see guys in here it's the darks that make it more than anything else and you know I can really advance my composition by going a little bit more dark right up here in the front like if I take a dark stroke and I look at my composition if I take this dark cool so I'm going to use violet and green here and if I take that dark and I apply a little bit of that right into here, I advance that sunflower and those little flowers. I will start taking away from the centers a bit, but I can do a little bit. So I look at, you know, through here, contrast. How much do I do here to, how much of that dark do I push around to advance something? So it advances that one. Maybe I want to blur that just a bit here. Take the edge off. I'm always, always watching my edges. So as you see as the edge of, like you see here, the edges of these sunflowers here, you see that the, the edges are not always like a, a daisy comma stroke. They're not a perfect outside round. I did that for years in decorative painting. But here, we want to give the impression of it, especially around right up onto these here. But, you know, how much you do, that's that's more up to you. That's up to you, and that'll be a signature of how you, you know, how you paint these uh, particular, you know, sunflowers. So... I'm going to bring an edge out. I think I can create more interest into the composition by bringing the edge of this petal out further out like this. So that's what some of the final things that I look at. Let's pull shadow out. Just that little edge and break that. I might want that because it's a bit of a line, so I may want that to hook around towards a petal a little bit more. So I'll just do it again and kind of draw it around here. Kind of draw that around here. Let's just push that a second. And I went right into that pedal, so we'll push that around. Make it look like you know what you're doing. Don't, don't get upset if you just screwed it up because it's only paint. You just go back and put it back on again. You go, oh darn, and you do it again. So... This time you try to do it like you know what you're doing. Here. And we'll pull that shadow out. I like that edge a little bit better. And some of that shadow pulling out there. Maybe a bit more of that shadow top tapped right into there. Boom, right out like that. It sinks that in a bit. A bit of the blue into that shadow so it's a bit darker. There, that gives a nicer, a nice look to that sunflower coming out that edge. You can have that little edge like right in there. See, it's real soft right now. And, and let me just show you. It's, it, guys, it's all about edges, okay? It's all about edges. And you can really see that one stroke still there. It's drying down, and that texture is going to stay there. And that's helping advance that front part of, the, of, the, of this uh, prairie sunflower. I don't want it back here, but I can definitely have it. I can definitely, you know, pick up more texture and drop an edge right in here like that. And look what that does to that front of that sunflower there. See how that edge and that texture just goes bang. Here it comes right there. Now, that's a choice that you make to how much you're going to have. Let's pull shadow out, push in and out a bit. Break that edge just a touch here. That's what I like about, you know, some of the impressionists and stuff would, would not feel bad about just breaking that edge right up there in the front, just breaking it. But I'm going to leave a little bit like that, and you see, and you can see how that advances it, right? And you know, that advances it. Let's pull just a bit of that shadow down here, break those edges there. But it's all about the edges. That's what it is to me, okay? 
So that gives you an idea. That's kind of a fun way to paint. It's all still uh, wet. This back here is a little bit dry on the board, on the very background, but the rest of it there is uh, is all wet, and uh, so not too bad for that. Okay, but it gives you an idea of painting some fun, you know, little things. Now this does feel as I'm stepping back, and I always like to step back. It does feel just a kind of bit disjointed because. So here is, I put them in what I call formal composition. They're touching each other. This is more informal, where they stay further apart. So sometimes when I feel that my formality is, is causing your eye to jump just a bit, I'll start to bring in some more softer yellow, yellow oranges into the center of that composition there and start to bring them in just a bit more. So... You can see it's, you don't know which one it is or which one it belongs to, but you start to just bring in, so this could be petals from the other one, it could be petals from another one back behind it, you know, add a few other little touches of that, and you start to bring them a little closer together. You can also extend the, if the eye jumps too much, you can also extend out the petal here. Okay, so let's just do that. And then I'll stop. It's not bad, but you just don't want the eye to jump too much here. Let's just drop this one out a little further than what I intended, but that's okay. And that'll flow back and forth between the two of them a little better. You could push this one out just a touch more. There we go. And that brings it in. It gives you a better flow. See, your eye doesn't jump now. Your eye pulls down through there. There's all kinds of that stuff. I talk about that. And those are edges and stuff that I taught are in my design, in my design series. I have a whole series of, um, golly, I think it's 20 hours of lectures of designs causing your eye to flow through your painting and stuff. And how do you do that? But we'll do that, okay? So there you got it. A la prima. Some nice, wonderful uh, prairie sunflowers here. You know, and they're, kind of, they're kind of cute. They're kind of, you know, a nice little flower. But I do like to paint them. A little bit more lost and a little bit edgy like that so that uh, you know they uh, gives it that nice impressionistic kind of look to it but uh, there you go okay give those a try Ain't right? so if you like the video and even if you don't like it why don't you go go ahead right down over there and hit click like and hit that subscribe button subscribe to the channel and if you click that little bell that's what I found you click that little bell then they notify you YouTube notifies you um, when uh, I launch another video, and I try to do a couple of them a week for the Sala Prima series, at least one a week, sometimes two, sometimes a little bit more, um, but I try to uh, I try to get at least one a week, And but they'll send you a notification when it's up, and we're going to be painting all the Prima lessons like this, kind of, you know, I'm just kind of giving you an overall right now, then later on we're going to build on them, right, and I'm going to teach you right basically how, how to build in, in uh, design and in color and in techniques and stuff. So I'm just kind of giving you an overview right now of Ala Prima, but we'll go more specific in, uh, in later on in the year. We're going to go all year with this, okay? So you don't want to miss anything. So, um, you know, hit that subscribe, okay? All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one.